Here's your first warned weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. It was a much cooler afternoon than what it has been, not only in these last few days, but also for quite a long time. And really well, quite a shock for many of us seeing those temperatures down in the 50s today. We were just in the 80s a few days ago. Just compared to 24 hours ago, many spots are around 25 degrees cooler than where they were just this time yesterday. Those temperatures at the moment sitting right around the 50 degree mark for many of us. Many spots now down in the 40s too. Still a little bit of a brisk wind out of the west, and that's going to keep us feeling much cooler than even what those temperatures currently show. We do have one kind of stronger thunderstorm we are currently tracking right near Dixon at the moment, moving to the southwest. There could be 50 mile per hour wind gusts within that particular storm. A few of these pockets of isolated showers and maybe a rumble or two of thunder continue for the rest of the evening tonight. Temperatures continuing to fall back down near the 30s for the overnight lows. I'll let you know just how long this cooler stretch sticks around and when we see our next chances for rain coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Live from Fox 39, WQRF-TV Rockford, and your home team, Eyewitness News at 4 starts now. Auto workers across the nation are still on strike. We have an update on where talks stand, and here in the state line, union workers gather to show their support. And raising mental health awareness, how local advocates hope coming together can help inspire. Plus, a new community event honors a young boy by supporting preschool scholarships. Organizers share the fun families can have during Jack's Joy Ride. Good afternoon, I'm Jess Lipson. Thanks for joining us for Eyewitness News at 4. Mimi Murphy is off today. The strike by United Auto Workers is now in its third week. Today, UAW's president said the walkouts will not expand to more plants. So what does this mean for a possible deal? Grady Trimble has the latest. We are winning. We are making progress and we are headed in the right direction. The United Auto Workers Union says no new strikes against the big three automakers for now. If the big three don't continue to make progress, that time's going to be coming real soon. The decision coming after what Union President Sean Fain called a transformative win with General Motors. He says the car maker agreed to bring its electric battery manufacturing workers under a future labor agreement. Our plan is winning at GM, and we expect it to win at Ford and Stellantis as well. On Thursday, Fain goaded the automakers with this tweet depicting them as contestants on The Bachelorette. The caption says to tune into his live stream, quote, to see who gets the rose. Our goal is to outsmart and outorganize corporate America. Since the strike began on September 15th, the UAW has expanded it twice. GM was hit harder by the union both times. Ford was spared from the first escalation and Stellantis dodged the second. Striking workers on the picket line say they feel like the talks have gone better this week compared to previous weeks. I have confidence in my union leadership. I have confidence in the bargaining committee. We're not trying to cripple anybody. We're just trying to get to an agreement. The big three automakers have laid off thousands of workers. Their suppliers have laid off thousands more. Some fear they could face bankruptcy if this strike drags on. In Wayne, Michigan, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. In Belvedere, local UAW workers rallied in support at the idled Stellantis plant. Hundreds of members of UAW's 1268 showed their support. The group hoping to send messages to fellow UAW members as well as Stellant Stellantis' CEO. While local workers are hoping a product can come to the state line, today the plant was filled with 12 to 68 members to show their support for UAW strikes for better wages, benefits, and working conditions. If we're going to send a message to the CEO, hey, we're here. We're ready to work. We're ready to work. Put a product in here. If it's to our UA, uh, UAW brothers and sisters, thank you for what you're doing for us. The sacrifices that you guys are doing for us, uh, we appreciate it. That's why these guys have shown up. UAW 1268 has around 1,200 members. They're scattered all over the country and hopes our product can come to Belvedere to bring everyone, as Franzen says, home. Illinois State are on the search for three suspects after the stolen car they were in hits a trooper's squad car. This happened last night around 10 on Interstate 94 in Cook County. ISP says a trooper tried to pull over the stolen black Dodge Charger. The driver took off. In the process, they hit a squad car that was on a separate traffic stop. The Chargers flipped. Three people were inside. They all got out and ran. 
They're still on the loose. The trooper was not hurt so far this year. Illinois State Police has had 16 move over related crashes. Scott's law requires drivers to slow down, move over when approaching emergency or any vehicle with their emergency or hazard lights on. We're ending the week focused on mental health, mental illness awareness. It is celebrated nationwide with other mental health advocates, bringing awareness to different mental illness diagnoses. Today, there was an annual rally for recovery. Our Nikel Delgado was there. Nikel, how did it go? That's right, Jess. So, so many people came out to support, and if you didn't know, Congress made Mental Illness Awareness Week in 1990, and today there was over 125 mental health advocates and organizations, all to encourage the community leaders to step up and to create change, and to inspire individuals to seek help. This year's theme is Better Together. We all have a piece of that story ourselves, and I think it's really great that we all are able to be here and share that experience together uh, for a greater good. Mental health advocate Logan White's brother had a mental health illness, and just over a year ago, he lost his life to substance abuse. Since then, Logan says he has dedicated his life to helping others. Uh, ensuring that the system that was in place when my brother was here is improved and available for those who could find themselves in his shoes and uh, to make sure that that occurrence does not happen again. Friday, NAMI Northern Illinois hosted a rally for recovery. Executive Director Danielle Angelari says it's a chance for local advocates and organizations to get on the same page. Keeping the conversation around mental health in the forefront of people's mind, um, bringing more understanding to the leaders in our community, to the community members, and allowing for more people to step up and say, okay, you understand, so I can come to you for help. Bring an awareness of the full spectrum of mental health within education, housing, decriminalization, and crisis response. The more visible the resources are and the more people talk about their own experiences, the more people will start reaching out for help. And then maybe even the more people will go into the field of helping others. I think it is a, uh, a pleasant and uh, welcome surprise. Um, now, saying that we have the uh, systems available, there is always room for improvement. Uh, we do need to consolidate the services that we do have. Uh, we do need to integrate and work together in order to ensure that these services are executed effectively. For a list of mental health resources, you can find that at this story at mystateline.com. Jess? Thank you, Nikel. Riders for Rockford Mass Transit now have a new tool to help them get around town. RMTD has launched a new app. The app allows riders to track their bus at any given time. That includes when a bus will leave or depart for a stop. The number of passengers on each bus will also be included. There's a new trip plan or two. It allows riders to type in their destinations and starting point. The app will then provide the best route. The app is free and it's available on the iOS and Android app stores and Google Play. It's now been nearly six years since Rockford Police Officer Jamie Cox was killed in the line of duty. This week, runners, walkers, and people throughout the community will gather for an annual outdoor event in his honor. The Jamie Cox Memorial 5K is tomorrow in Roscoe. The run starts at 10 a.m. at Roscoe Middle School. The path takes runners on the Stone Bridge Trail. All proceeds from tomorrow's event will go to the Jamie Cox Foundation. The nonprofit supports veterans, first responders, and underprivileged youth in the Rockford area. Also in Roscoe, a community fundraiser will help support preschoolers in the state line. Jack's Joyride honors the life of Jack Bauman. Jack died last year after a tragic accident. His parents created the Jack Bauman Memorial in his memory. Tomorrow's Jack's Joyride will take visitors to 14 Roscoe businesses or Jack stops. At each location, those taking part will get a passport stamp. Then at the end of the day, those stamps can be used for raffles. Proceeds from the event will help provide preschool scholarships. The state of Illinois doesn't fund all uh, pre-K programs. Mm -hmm. And so for students who really could benefit from that, sometimes it becomes financially out of reach. Um, mm -hmm. And so the funds for this will pay for uh, those scholarships for students to go to the Prairie Hill um, pre-K program. Okay. The Joyride kicks off tomorrow at 3 p.m. at Meraki Salon and Studio on Williams Drive. An event that brings the Midwest's best rowers to the town returns to Rockford this weekend. It's the head of the Rock Regatta. Sunday teams will meet at Martin Park and race down the river, 3.2 miles to YMCA Log Lodge. 
The event will come a long way since 1985 when the two teams took part. Organizers say the regatta attracts more than 2,000 rowers from across the country and more than 5,000 spectators. Teams will hit the water at 8 in the morning and runs until 4 in the afternoon. You can check it out for yourself for free. It's Friday night in Rockford. That means high school football and action in the state line. Teams will take to the fields in just a few hours, and our sports team has it covered for you. Scott Leber and Reagan Holgate give us a preview of what you can expect tonight on Overtime. We've got you covered again for Week 7 action in high school football. It's a big one in the next 10. Yeah, the top four teams in the conference are going to go head-to-head. -head. In Rockton, conference leader Hananiga will host Belvedere North in our Game of the Week. The Indians are one game up on North, Harlem, and Boylan. A win in this game could clear Hananiga's path toward the conference championship. The Indians are coming off an emotional win last week over Boylan. Now they have to get up for another big game. The Blue Thunder believe they can play with the Indians. Now they'll try to prove it. The other big game in the Nick 10 has Boylan playing at Harlem. The Titans could show up in a bad mood after losing to Hananiga last week. Yeah, they want to get that bad taste out of their mouths. The Huskies have kind of quietly put together their 5-1 record. They're on a four-game winning streak. Jamani Muhammad and the Harlem offense have been picking up steam in recent weeks. Muhammad leads the conference in rushing. He's topped 200 yards each of the last two weeks. Here are the other three Nick 10 games Friday night. Auburn is at Belvedere, Freeport plays at Jefferson, and Guilford is at East. For the second week in a row, the Dupec Rivermen will play a key game in the NUIC. Last week it was Lena Winslow. This week it's at Fulton. The Steamers are 4-2. They're looking to become eligible for the playoffs. The Rivermen are already eligible. A win in this game locks down that playoff berth and gets the Rivermen back on track. Here are the other games in the NUIC. EPC plays at Lena Winslow. Dakota is at Galena. Stockton at West Carroll. And Gibson City at Forreston. That game will be played Saturday afternoon. In the Big Northern Conference, co-leaders Byron and Dixon will have home games. The Tigers will host Winnebago. Dixon will host Rockford Christian. Also, Genoa Kingston will play at Stillman Valley. Rock Falls takes on Oregon. And North Boone will play at Rockford Lutheran Saturday afternoon. Both of those teams are thinking playoffs. North Boone will become eligible with a win. Here are some of the other games this weekend. Rochelle at Sandwich, DeKalb at Naperville Central, Amboy at AFC, South Beloit at Milford, and Sycamore at Woodstock North. In our overtime spotlight segment, we'll get down and dirty in the trenches. We'll focus on the guys who do the hard work on the line of scrimmage, get a feel for what it's like to do their jobs and what it takes to be a good player on the lines. Join us for all that and more Friday night on Overtime Live at 11 p.m. on Fox 39. After backlash from the community, the village of Pecatonica moves Trick or Treat back to October 31st. Pecatonica posted its official Halloween observance hours last month. It was set to be held on Sunday, October 29th. Parents voiced their frustrations with the decision. Last night, the Pecatonica Village Board reconsidered and agreed to move trick-or-treat back to the day of Halloween. Those hours will run from 5.30 until the evening until 8. The September job reports is out and it's better than many experts expected. Coming up, the threats that some say still lay ahead for the economy. And former President Donald Trump weighs in on the race for House Speaker, the congressman he says he'll get behind. Our temperatures have been much cooler today than what we've been even last week, but also as much more what we were yesterday. Temperatures into the 50s for the large majority of the week ahead. I'll let you know how long it lasts and when we see our potential first frost of the season coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Mimi Murphy. The labor market is still hot. That's according to the September jobs report. The White House is touting the data as a bright spot for the economy. But it may unwelcome news for the Fed's inflation fight. Our Washington correspondent Raquel Martin reports has the latest. President Biden is celebrating another strong jobs report. 336,000 jobs were added to the economy in September. It's no accident. It's Bidenomics. Biden says the uptick, which outpaced expectations, is a positive signal for the American people. We have the highest share of working age Americans in the workforce in 20 years. But some economists say the economic outlook isn't that simple. It's not entirely smooth sailing or full steam ahead for the economy. Mark Hamrick with Bankrate says the economy isn't out of the weeds yet. We're still talking about the risk of a government shutdown in mid-November. We have global tension. We have an 
an auto worker strike that weighs on output, and we have high interest rates that make the cost and availability of borrowing more tenuous. To fight inflation, the Federal Reserve consistently raised interest rates for more than a year. But their next steps are less certain. It is quite unclear at the moment. While the current inflation rate is down by more than half compared to its peak last June, recent polls show more Americans don't feel good about the economy or how President Biden is handling it. Virginia Democratic Senator Tim Kaine says he's not surprised. After a tough time, it takes a while for optimism to come back. And we, we went through about as tough of three years as you could imagine with COVID. But believes once new federal investments take hold, the mood will shift. We just have to keep promoting the good things that are happening, like today's jobs report. I mean, In Washington, Raquel Martin. The race to find a new Speaker of the House is ramping up. This after former President Donald Trump announced who he would endorse. Overnight on Truth Social, Trump threw his support behind Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Jordan is a close ally of Trump. Republican Congressman Steve Scalise and Kevin Hearn say they too are running for speaker. The House is at a standstill until a speaker is picked. Jordan argues he believes he can unite the GOP conference. That's the, that's the message I've been talking to my colleagues about is who can, who can bring the eight in, in, into the, on, you know, part of the team, who can unite our team. I think I can do that. If I didn't think I could do that, I wouldn't run. Uh, and I also think I can, I can take our message to the American people so the so the the country knows what we're trying to do and what we're and how we're working for them and, and that's those are the two fundamental questions who's better equipped to do that the house is scheduled to vote on a speaker next wednesday this year's nobel peace prize is awarded to a jailed iranian activist for women's rights and democracy 51 year old nargiz mohammed has also campaigned against the death penalty She's been arrested more than a dozen times and convicted five times. Her sentence is totaling 31 years in prison. Her current stay behind bars began in 2021 after she attended a memorial for a person killed during nationwide protests. This year's Peace Prize also recognizes the hundreds of thousands of people who in the preceding year have demonstrated against the theocratic regime's policies of discrimination and oppression targeting women. Mohammed is the 19th woman and second Iranian woman to win the Peace Prize. Chicago Bears and football fans are remembering Dick Buckfist today. Coming up, we look back on the life and career of the beloved Hall of Fame linebackers. Born weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Well, things are much cooler for the afternoon today, today than what we have been even recently. Not only last week, remember just a few days ago we were in the 80s and now many spots are in the 40s. A near 30 degree temperature difference from even just what we had this time yesterday. All thanks to a couple of strong cold fronts and now we still see that stronger northwesterly wind helping to bring our temperatures not only down locally but also across the north central portions of the country. Temperatures at the moment down in the 50s in many spots across those northern plains. As I mentioned, locally, things much cooler than even where we were just 24 hours ago. A roughly 27 degree temperature change from this time yesterday in DeKalb, 28 degrees cooler in Rockford than where we were at this time just yesterday. Things are remaining a little bit on the cooler side and looking at some of those numbers, temperatures in the 40s across the board, 48 right now the current temperature in Rockford, 46 in DeKalb, 46 in Rochelle, 48 in Freeport, still holding on to the 50s in Sterling and in Savannah, though those wind chills making it feel much cooler than that. Hopefully we weren't going to be bringing out that wind chill word for at least a little bit longer, but unfortunately those brisk northerly winds helping to kind of add that to our verbiage, at least in the short term. Our weather watcher, Bob on the southeast side of Rockford, reporting a temperature of 49 degrees, a dew point of 41, and around 15 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. He also was reporting some grapple that had fallen just a little bit earlier as well, with some of these kind of more robust cores of some of these showers that we've been dealing with throughout the afternoon. Still, at least some gloomier conditions across our SkyTrack camera overlooking the Poplar Grove Airport. Off in the distance, some of those darker colored clouds, and that's kind of where we're going to be seeing with some of these more robust showers hours that are going on. One in particular that we are keeping an eye on that is actually across portions of Lee County. This one is actually capable of producing 50 mile per hour wind gusts because it's kind of moving in the same distance of our general winds anyways. And so as the
this kind of core is kind of moving its way down, kind of pushing some of those winds and that cooler air out, it's actually producing some of those stronger wind gusts, but also because the storm is moving in the general direction of our gener general wind speed as well, with our current winds right around 20 miles per hour. And another 30 added on from that storm can be producing around 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Our weather for the rest of the evening tonight remaining a little bit on the cooler side. 48 degrees for kickoff for our Friday night football games. We are continuing to see a little bit cooler for halftime as well, down to 47. Still holding on to a few of those showers throughout much of the day as well, and some of those cooler wind chills as well. So make sure if you're headed out this evening for any of those games, make sure you grab a couple extra layers. Might even want the hat and gloves for the evening tonight as well. Down to 39 for the overnight low. Isolated showers and potentially even a storm early on, but things continuing to clear out. Unfortunately, that clearing does lead to temperatures falling a little bit on the quicker side, so down to 39 degrees for the overnight low. We only return back up to 57 for the day tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies, a fairly brisk wind still out of the northwest around 5 to 15 miles per hour, potentially gusting around close to 20, a little bit lower than where we were today. This is kind of what we're going to be seeing with our overall pattern. This cooler wind helping to be brought in by a strong trough in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That trough going to stick around in the Great Lakes areas. It kind of interacts with Tropical Storm Felipe. It's going to be making its way up the coast. That's going to help continue to strengthen it for just a little bit longer. And that's what's going to keep us feeling a little bit on the cooler side. Another system going to be breaking its way in for the middle to end of the week, going to eventually bring us some slightly warmer weather in the short term, but then we do get some of those showers that start to work their way back in beyond that. So putting this all together with future cast, we are going to see a few of those isolated showers throughout the rest of the early part of the evening, but clearing skies for the overnight back down into the 50s for our overnight or in the 30s for our overnight lows into the 50s again tomorrow. A few isolated showers cannot be ruled out for your Sunday, but that cooler weather is sticking with us in the short term as well. And we could see even our first frost of the season. Normal frosts, not too far away from this current time as well with some of those overnight lows and those clear skies and light winds early in the week. I do think that we could potentially see our first frost of the season potentially as we get into Sunday night, Monday night, maybe even Tuesday night. 50s for our afternoon highs, at least going forward for the early part of the week. A few isolated showers possible on Sunday and then our next chances for rain with slightly warmer temperatures just as we get into the end of the week. Thanks, Jordan. An iconic horror franchise gets a new chapter. Coming up, Dean Richards offers his review of the latest Exorcist sequel. But first, as we go to break, here's Michelle Abraham with a look at what's on, what's coming up on Good Day Stateline. Hey, it's Michelle. Tonight on Good Day Stateline, we're highlighting Breast Cancer Awareness Month with Gina Meeks, and we're telling you about the Rock River Valley Video Game Convention 2. Plus, Tamonique has a new Tam on the Town to get you ready for Halloween. We'll see you at 5.30 and 11.30 on Fox 39. The parade of pre-Halloween scary movies continues. This week, it's a sequel to a classic. Dean Richards offers up his take on The Exorcist, The Believer. Whatever those girls went, they brought something back with them. <laughs> I believe you can help get our daughters back. She knows who I am. Where's the other girl? There's something about the conjuring of evil in a horror movie, or even worse, the possession of an innocent soul by Satan that makes it extra scary and profoundly disturbing. I guess it raises too many questions and fears about the principles of good and evil that most of us were taught from childhood. That may be why the original Exorcist from 1973 was so upsetting when then a 12-year-old Reagan, played by Linda Blair, twisted and turned and spewed the evil as we had never seen before. Blair and Ellen Burstyn, who played her mother, were nominated for Oscars for their landmark roles. And they are among the many references from the first movie that play important parts in the construction of the new sequel, The Exorcist Believer. It all comes from director David Gordon Green, who revived the Halloween franchise. He pretty much ignores all of the failed sequels that have come out and leans heavily into the original blockbuster as now two young girls become possessed, leaving their families, the church, and their small town turned upside down. Leslie Odom Jr. is one of the parents fighting to get his little girl back, including calling in experts for help. 
like someone else who has been through what he's going through. The mother from the first movie, now an author and expert on the subject, and once again, played by the now 90-year-old Ellen Burstyn, the first time that she's been in one of these sequels. Having a working knowledge of the events of the 1973 original will be helpful to pick up on clues and surprises that are sprinkled throughout this new movie all the way through the end. As for the basic story, the faces are new, but there's a lot that's not between all the jump scares and levitations and pea soup-like spewings. Even with more than its share of plotline pitfalls, it's still nostalgic and still a little bit creepy. It's a Dean's List C+. Well, you can always get my movie reviews and home video pics sent right to your phones every week just by texting the word Dean to 97999. Hope you have a great weekend in Chicago. I'm Dean Richards. The Chicago Bears use a Thursday night game to break a nearly year-long losing streak. Coming up, the 1-2 connection that proved to be too much for the Washington Commanders. After nearly a year, the Chicago Bears are back in the win column. The Bears took on the Washington Commanders last night in our nation's capital. Justin Fields and DJ Moore connected eight times for 230 yards and three scores. Fields threw a total of four touchdown passes that matched his career high he set last week. Bears win this one 40-20. Here's QB1 on the victory. Seeing all the hard work pay off, especially, you know, getting a dub after everything that's, you know, happened this year. You know, everything in the media, everything on the outside. Um, just, just, it just feels good when you can... You can say that the hard work paid off. So again, I'm, I'm proud of everybody in the building. I love everybody on my team. I was nervous, uh, out of this world nervous. So I guess that was uh, my body telling me that we was about to go off. So uh, people was like, do you know how many yards you got? I'm like, uh, please don't tell me. Uh, we don't, let's not jinx tonight and let's just focus on this win. But when we got, when we got off the field, it was, it was all, everybody telling me what I did and uh, it was good. Today, the Bears announced Chase Claypool's time with the team is over. The wide receiver has been traded to the Miami Dolphins. In return, the Bears get a 2025 sixth round draft pick. The Dolphins also get a 2025 seventh round pick. Claypool came to the Bears late last season in a trade with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he saw limited action because of injuries, performance, and questions about his effort. Bears and football fans are mourning the loss of Dick Buckus. The beloved former Bears linebacker and Hall of Fame Famer died in his sleep at his California home early Thursday. News of Butkus' death came less than two hours before last night's game. Judy Wang looks back on the life of the ultimate bear. I had a golden opportunity and I was very lucky to do what I love to do, and that was to play football. Dick Buckus in one of his final interviews. Growing up on the South Side, the youngest of nine children, Buckus talked about his working class roots and how they shaped his work ethic. You know, people work hard, whatever the jobs they have. Uh, I don't know, and that seemed to carry over to, you know, to playing football, for me at least. The Hall of Fame linebacker died Thursday at his Malibu, California home at age 80. Gruff and ferocious, he personified what it meant to be a Chicago Bear. I had a, a, a several chances to visit with uh, Dick during the time uh, that I've been here, and it's always great talking to him, you know, because he's one of my idols. Buck has began his football career at Chicago Vocational High School, then played at the University of Illinois before the Bears picked him in the first round of the 1965 draft. During his nine seasons in Chicago, he earned nicknames that included the Enforcer, the Maestro of Mayhem, the Robot of Destruction. You know, I played with some great ones. Nobody liked Buck. I mean, he was mean. Uh, and, he, and he was not only mean, but he could back it up. I mean, he just played the game the way it was supposed to be played. Playing the game here in Chicago for his hometown fans meant so much to him, and that's why he played the game so so violently and 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 took no prisoners. Prisoners. After retiring in 1973, Buckus became a broadcaster and actor, landing roles on TV and in movies. Hampton also remembered Buckus celebrating with the team after winning the 1985 Super Bowl. For fans to say, oh, you guys were great, well, that's wonderful to hear. But when Dick Buckus tells you you were great, 
boy, that had a special resonance. The NFL has had thousands of great players, hundreds of you know Hall of Famers, and all, but in my mind, Dick Buckus was the gold standard. Thousands of satellites orbit our planet, but not all of them still work. Coming up, the company now facing a first of its kind fine for failing to take care of its space junk. And we have some scattered showers that have been working their way through the area here through the evening. I'll continue to track where they are and where they're going to be for the rest of the evening tonight and let you know when things clear out and temperatures continue to fall coming up in just a few minutes. Cast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Last weekend, we did see some much warmer weather in the area, including temperatures that were in the 80s for many of us on Saturday, 86 degrees, Sunday, 86 degrees and Monday, 85 degrees. We were running close to 20 degrees above normal for that time of year. Now compare that to the weekend that we are going to be seeing ahead. Temperatures much cooler down in the 50s, 57, 57 and 58 for Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And that's going to be seeing temperatures running around 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. Through the afternoon today, we still see that much cooler weather, not only with the cooler risk wind, but also some scattered showers that have been working their way through the area. An isolated storm tracked its way from Dixon all the way down through Amboy and parts of Lee County. That one was actually producing briefly potentially winds around 50 miles per hour. Now that continuing to work its way out, we are still seeing some pockets of sunshine. Just a few minutes ago before this came on, we actually saw a little bit of sunshine showing up there with our SkyTrack camera overlooking Freeport, but you can still see that brisker northwest wind from that flagpole that's out there with our Freeport SkyTrack camera brought to us by Rockford Career College. We are continuing to see that much cooler weather as well. Temperatures down in the 40s at the moment, 48 in Rockford, 47 in DeKalb and Rochelle, 50 degrees in Sterling and Savannah. And we are still seeing those wind chill values much cooler than that as well. Down in the low 40s for many of us, not too much longer before we see some of those wind chill values possibly even dip into the 30s. 39 degrees for the overnight low tonight because we do have some of those isolated showers early on, but skies actually clear out once we get toward midnight and that's going to help to drop some of those temperatures down even just a little bit quicker. Still holding on to that brisk northwest wind gusting to around 25 miles per hour through the overnight hours tonight. Only back up to 57 for the afternoon tomorrow. So far today, we've only topped out right near that 50 degree mark. So we are at least a little bit warmer for the afternoon back up to 57 degrees, but still holding on to that breezier northwest wind helping to keep things feeling a little bit on the cooler side. However, we do get a little bit more sunshine for the afternoon than what we saw today, and that's what we're going to be stuck with as we get into the rest of the weekend. A little bit more sunshine, but still holding on to those cooler temperatures, partly because of the trough that's working its way through the area. That's going to move and kind of stall out across the Great Lakes, keeping this north northerly flow here locally. That's going to keep us feeling much cooler in the short term, but we do have another weather system that'll be working its way into the area as we get into the middle of next week. That's going to at least briefly turn our upper level winds from the south. That will though transport a lot more moisture to the area and potentially bring us some heavier shower chances as we get into the later part of the week. Still quite a bit uncertain as to exactly where the axis of that is going to go, but still keeping an eye on things toward the end of the week. Still a few isolated shower chances possible through the early part of the evening tonight, but things clearing out once we get toward midnight. Temperatures falling back down into the upper 30s and those low 40s. Only back up into the 50s for the afternoon tomorrow, though a little bit more sunshine than what we saw today. Increasing cloud covers, we get into Sunday. A few isolated shower chances, mainly early in the day as well. And that's going to kind of be the theme is that uh, that trough stalls out across the Great Lakes. Continued short waves continue to go around that. And that's going to bring us those increasing chances for a few of those shower chances as we get into the week. Normally for this time of year, temperature is pretty close to the 70 degree mark. And then a little bit cooler than that, down to 55 degrees for our normal high temperatures by the time we get to the end of the month. The seven day forecast continuing to show temperatures cooler than normal in the 50s in the short term. And then we slowly start warming up a couple days in the 60s late next week. Thank you, Jordan. Dish Network receives a first of its kind fine. Coming up, the FCC says the company isn't taking care of its space junk. The federal government is cracking down on interstellar litter bugs. Dish Network has been hit with a $150,000 fine. The FCC says the satellite provider added to the growing collection of space junk orbiting the planet. Evan Brown explains. 
Remember being taught that littering was bad? In the city or in the woods, help keep America looking good. But what happens if you dump your junk in outer space? While local police might give you a ticket for littering in the park, the Federal Communications Commission is now able to levy astronomical fines against those who don't pitch in while out of this world. The FCC is slapping Dish Network with a $150,000 fine for failing to properly dispose of one of their TV satellites, adding to the already dangerous level of so-called space junk orbiting the planet. The satellite, called Echo Star 7, was supposed to have been put into what is called a disposal orbit, an out-of-the-way corner of space serving as a sort of interstellar junkyard. But it ran out of fuel and ended up causing concerns for space navigation. And that's been a new area of focus for the FCC, which is making a big push to tackle the growing amount of space junk floating around up there. The agency calls the Dish Network fine a, quote, breakthrough settlement, hoping it will discourage other would-be space litter bugs from clogging our solar system with debris. It becomes that much more important that we understand where things are so that we can create the highways and byways, if you will, to have a safe, experience for everyone doing business in space. Right now, there are about 35,000 pieces of orbital debris up there being tracked by space surveillance systems here on Earth. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. A final look at weather when we return. to show a few of those isolated showers as we get into the rest of the evening tonight. Some of that lighter rain that we had earlier on now continuing to work its way out, but isolated shower chances cannot be ruled out throughout much of the evening going into the overnight hours. Clear skies, however, returning to the area. Temperatures falling back down into the 30s for the overnight lows tonight. We do stay in the 50s for many of our afternoons going forward. Thank you, Jordan. Have a great weekend.